In this video, we will discuss regarding summary writing part of PTE. In this, one paragraph will be given to you and you are supposed to write summary in a one single complete sentence. There are one to three items in PTE to write summary. First of all, the criteria of scoring. The summary is scored on the basis of content just like other items. Two marks are given if the person provides a good summary of the text, all relevant aspects are mentioned. One mark if the person provides a fair summary of the text but misses one or two aspects of the paragraph. No mark will be given if the person omits or misrepresents the main aspects of the text. So in order to get more marks in content, First of all, we need to know that how data is arranged in summary paragraphs. In summary, one or two paragraphs will be given to you and those paragraphs are further divided into sections. And in those sections, data is always arranged logically or according to the timeline and it is always linked to each other. Mostly, first paragraph contains the introduction and the main topic. The middle paragraph supports the information. For example, it gives us references, sources, facts, researches, and data regarding the introduction part. Last paragraph is very important because it deals with the conclusion. Or any future prediction or any contrary fact or idea or any central idea. So it's very important to read last paragraph very carefully because sometimes the last paragraph is totally opposite than the previous two. So make sure you read it very carefully to make a correct summary. Next is, suppose in this paragraph, the first one is, on earth, naturally occurring amount of greenhouse gases cause air temperature near the surface to be about 33 degrees centigrade, warmer than it would be in their absence. Without the earth's atmosphere, the earth's average temperature would be well below the freezing temperature of water. So this is the first subsection in summary paragraph and in this the author is talking related to greenhouse gases and their importance. This is the second one. Human activity since the industrial revolution has increased the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. According to the work published in 2007, the concentration of CO2 and methane have increased by 36% and 148% respectively since 1750. So in second paragraph, the author is talking related to human activity and how human activity increased the concentration of carbon dioxide and methane. This is the third paragraph which is important. Who is responsible for global warming and who will take the initiatives? The question is simple but no, no one could find the answer. The key factor, this is important line, the key factor in reducing it is use of renewable sources because renewable techniques can be deployed quickly, are increasingly cost effective and create jobs while reducing pollution. So in third paragraph, the author talked related to the solution and he gave one important solution which is use of renewable sources. So technically, in order to write summary, you need to mention everything, the importance of greenhouse gases, how they have increased and what's the solution. You are not supposed to write anything from your own knowledge. Don't write anything related to global warming. Don't write any of the solution which you know previously. Just make sure you mention only one solution which is mentioned by the author. So in this, you might have noticed that data is related to each other. The first one is introduction, which was related to greenhouse gases. And the second one are sporting facts and research data. And third is solutions. So how to write summary? First of all, try to gather important points and keywords, such as amount of greenhouse gases, air temperature, warmer, human activity, increased amount of greenhouse gases, have increased by 36% and 148%, who's responsible, key factor, use of renewable sources, and these things. These are the keywords. First of all, identify keywords and gather important points out of these paragraphs. And the important points involves the amount of greenhouse gases as well as human activity as well as one solution which is use of renewable sources.
So make sure you mention all three aspects in your summary paragraph. If you have mentioned only one aspect, you will lose marks in content section. So this is how I will write a sample summary. Use of renewable sources is very important to reduce pollution because emission of greenhouse gases has augmented to a greater extent as a result of human activity resulting in an increase in the temperature of the earth's surface. So one thing you have noticed, I didn't write anything from my own knowledge. Each and every sentence is related to the paragraph, like use of renewable sources, it was mentioned in last paragraph very important because they have written key factor has augmented increased they have mentioned it here to a greater extent 36 percent and 148 percent due to human activity and increase in the temperature of earth's surface so in this i didn't mention anything related to trees or anything related to human activities such as pollution or any noise pollution or sound pollution i haven't mentioned anything from my knowledge each and everything is related to paragraph and second thing is I just modified some of the words like they have said increased I wrote augmented to a greater extent this is how you can change the vocabulary next is is it enough to simply have a job an office or organization to work in and get a check at the end of the week not anymore. A workplace, however large or small, has to be driven by efficiency and achievement that manifests itself in the form of tangible results for the organization and is rewarding for the employee. Less productive inputs and lower efficiency levels are bound to affect the business and jeopardize its sustainability and survival. So technically, the first paragraph just uh, finds some of the keywords, which is workplace, He's talking about workplace efficiency and achievement and he's saying that without efficiency and achievement there will be problems in the business. And the next important thing is if you don't know the vocabulary, if there are some of the words you don't understand just like me. For example, you don't know the word uh, 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 tangible or tangible or tangible I don't know or you don't know the word jeopardize and sustainability just replace it with something the word something this is what I do like this that manifests itself in the form of something results in the organization and it is rewarding for the employee less productive inputs and lower efficiency level are bound to affect the business and jeopardize its sustainability so if you don't know meaning of these two words just replace it and do something to its sustainability and survival. So if you understand the whole sentence, you might have any idea that whether this word means negative or positive. So in this case, less productive inputs, efficiency levels are bound to affect the business and jeopardize means this is something negative. So this is how you can find the meaning of some of the words. And if you don't find them, just leave them because they are not at all important. The important thing is workplace efficiency and achievement. In second paragraph, it is said that a few factors can help to improve the employee productivity. So in this, he is going to talk about some factors to improve productivity at the workplace. Every employee need to be well aware that he is accountable for his actions and decisions. So this is first factor. Second is every target or milestone set needs to be followed up as well. So to see its progress is sufficient and if not whether any interim measures can be taken before it is too late to salvage a situation. So technically I don't know the meaning of interim and salvage a situation. So what I'll do, I'll just read it whether any some form of measures can be taken before it's too late to salvage a solution to do something to a situation. So technically we need measures to solve a situation. So this is how you can get an idea related to these words. So interim must be like we need extreme measures to improve or to tackle with a situation. This is how you can find meaning of some of the difficult words. And if you don't know them, just leave them. 
next is what if i say i have a magic wand to improve efficiency so here he has a key factor motivation encouraging them help helps them move forward and do even better and makes the worker feel happy innovative ways of motivating them spurs them even more so technically again i don't know the meaning of spurs but i know this is something positive because they have said motivating them spurs them even more maybe this means they will make them more efficient this is how you can guess the meaning of any word so technically in this he talked about motivation so you are not supposed to miss the word motivation in your summary so this is the introduction this is these are the facts and this is the conclusion so let's gather important points and keywords so these are the important points job workplace efficiency achievement less productive inputs affect the business see i just ignored this because i don't know the meaning of this but i just underlined the effect affect the business few factors which are accountable and followed up magic wand motivation encouragement motivation so let's make a summary sorry for my slides they are way too overcrowded motivation is of paramount value as compared to the other factors as it stimulates the employees to move forward and perform effectively to improve efficiency without which an organization cannot survive so technically again i have taken each and everything from these paragraphs and i have written without which an organization cannot survive because i didn't know the meaning of these words the next is this paragraph a pen is a writing implement used to apply ink to a surface such as paper for writing or for drawing historically reed pens quill pens and dip pens were used with a nib dipped in ink ruling pens allow precise adjustment of line width and still find a few specialized uses but technically pens such as radiograph are more commonly used modern type also include ball point roller ball fountain and felt or ceramic dip pens this is the paragraph and this is introduction about pens so it's talking about different types of pens you might have seen a pen in the pocket of an accomplished person for intellectual it's not me- not merely a fashionable device to decorate their pockets it represents the power the power of freedom of speech so in this he told about types of pen and in this he said why accomplished people wear those pens because it represents the power the power of freedom of speech so this line is very important and you are not supposed to miss it the pen is mightier than the sword indicates that the communication particularly written language or in some interpretations administrative power or advocacy of an independent press is more effective tool than direct violence so in this they have conveyed a message related to importance of pen and again if you don't know the meaning such as or in some interpretation suppose you don't know the meaning of interpretation just substituted something on in some something administrative power or advocacy suppose you don't know the meaning of advocacy just leave it of an independent press is more effective tool but overall when you read the whole paragraph you understand what it's trying to say so in this case suppose this is the summary a pen is a device which is used for writing and it has several types some of them were used in old times while others are used in modern times you will get zero mark because you haven't mentioned anything important you just read the first paragraph and you wrote your summary on the basis of first paragraph related to the types of pen This is second a pen is a writing device which has numerous types and it is often worn by accomplished people as a symbol of freedom of speech so you have mentioned one important line here so this is how this is why you got only one mark because you have mentioned only one aspect of the paragraph this is the correct summary 
A pen is considered mightier than the sword to indicate that the written communication is more effective than violence and this is the reason it is worn by intellectuals as a symbol of freedom of speech. So this is conveying the correct meaning of the paragraph. And so many times in PTE I have just a second and most of the times in PT I have noticed that first two paragraphs are not related to the third paragraph and in third and final paragraph in PTE they have always mentioned a new idea or a contrary fact or something like the central idea so make sure you have uh, studied the last paragraph properly because it will help you in summary writing don't write your summary based on the first paragraph Next is form. One mark is given if it's written in one single complete sentence. Zero mark if it's not written in one single complete sentence or contain fewer than five or more than 75 words or it's written in capital letters. So be careful with the full stop. Make sure you have written one complete sentence and don't put full stop accidentally while putting comma. Just like I did here because comma and full stop buttons are nearby and don't accidentally put full stop instead of comma because this way you may lose marks and make sure your summary contains 5 to 75 words but ideally i write 30 to 35 words for summary or maybe 30 to 40 words summary is perfect don't make it way too lengthy and don't make it way too short next is grammar Two marks are given if you have correct grammatical structure. One mark if there are some errors and zero if there is defective grammatical structure. So make sure you revise your grammar for the writing section again and again and make sure you study about the connectors that how connectors are used and make sure you have studied related to complex compound sentences. Next is vocabulary. Two marks are given if the person has appropriate choice of words. So don't try to find so sophisticated words for the summary. Just make sure you write synonyms of one or two words. Just like I, uh, change, I have changed increased to augmented or you have changed motivate to stimulate. Just like this, don't try to find so high five words. One mark is given if you have made any errors and two if you have defective word choice. Next is very important thing is learn connectors. Connectors are very important and you can use these websites myenglishteacher.eu and linguapress.com to learn connectors. Connectors are the words such as therefore, however and these type of words which help you in summary writing because in this you have to write complex sentences or complex compound sentences. So make sure you write, make sure you learn the correct form of connectors that how to use connectors. This is very important. So at the end, in short, make sure you read the whole paragraph carefully and pay a special attention to the last paragraph because paragraph in PT are well constructed. They don't just take any paragraph and copy and paste. Each and every paragraph is well constructed and each and every subsection of that paragraph is linked to each other. So make sure you read the whole paragraph, identify the keywords and try to produce a summary in one single sentence. And be careful with the comma and full stop. Don't accidentally press full stop in between the sentence.